joined now by Sabres host and 11-day power play participant, Brian Duff. Hi. Thanks. Welcome, Duff. I was just waiting for the sun to set over there so I could actually <laughs> see you. Oh, Good timing. Uh -huh. Thanks so much for joining us today. It's my pleasure. It's the opening day. It's uh, amazing how you guys continue to adapt and to think of, I, honestly, like, I feel like this has been going for a decade. It has that much of an impact in this community. And everything you guys have been able to do so far, it never ceases to amaze. You, you latch on to, you know, popular trends uh, that, that, that allow people to connect, you know, whether it's through social or advertise, anything. And, and I just, I'm, I'm in awe of what you've done, and I'm very thankful to be here. Thanks. Oh. You can stay as long as you like with tech compliments <laughs> like that. <laughs> we could not do this without you and so many other people that help us every day. You know, this is a true community event. Uh -huh. um, question for you, Brian. I mean, you've been involved with the 11-day power play for quite a while. Mm -hmm. what, what was your first interaction with us? Oh, boy. I mean, that's a great question. I mean, I, I just... I think right when you guys proposed it, I mean, obviously it was something that in our line of work, it's it's something that we're going to, you know, get behind and promote. And 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 I know, I was, I was away for a pretty big chunk of the first one. I was up in in Canada visiting my parents, which now seems like an impossibility. I haven't seen them since almost the start of the year because I can't get up there to see them. Um, and you know, from from that point on, I mean, it, it's just. It felt like with every passing day, you knew somebody else that was getting involved. And you were getting, I would use the word besieged, but that has like a negative connotation. But you were getting a lot of emails from people reaching out like, hey, can you spare 25 bucks and, you know, sponsor me? <laughs> and But, I mean, the numbers speak for themselves, right? And I just felt like, and you already said it, Aim, it it's community. And, and it just got to a point where it's like, is there anyone that I know that isn't involved in the 11-day power play? It, it was that remarkable how its tentacles reached out so quickly and just kind of gra grabbed the entire area. Well, if they're not involved, if they haven't been involved, they better get involved, right? <laughs> uh, I can't imagine you'd find someone that, uh, that hasn't been connected to a person who's been on a team or knows someone who has fundraised. It really, it, it, it is, it has just made an incredible footprint here it's great and and i think the nice thing that i've heard is that you know people outside of this market have taken note of it and yeah. then we already know it as a buffalo thing but it's nice that this buffalo thing could be respected and copied and followed and enjoyed and used to the advantage of other communities you know yeah. that's that's the beauty i mean so again congratulations for being trendsetters in the best possible philanthropic way yeah well and, and this year is new you have your your kids playing this year correct no they're just here watching <laughs> oh, uh, cheerleading <laughs> so they're not participating they're not participating oh. no i think i well one's 15 one's 13 and i never really pushed them too hard into hockey and i would say that it's probably been at least a decade since i even tried so <laughs> <laughs> yeah we had one not play hockey uh, our daughter played for a little bit. Yeah. Basketball took over. Uh huh. And then I grabbed Anna Liam and I said, "You're playing hockey." Yeah. And uh, it's been a, it's been a they, lot of fun. They both skate, and we enjoy recreational skating in the winter. And I think that's for me is the biggest comfort because I just wanted them to make sure that they knew how to do it and were never intimidated by it. Because you get older, you're in your teenage years, your twenties, and social events pop up. You don't want to say, "Oh, I can't do it," and and then keep yourself away from it. And yeah. and, and so in that sense. They're comfortable around the rink, whether they're spectators or casually skating or whatever. Yep, so, yep, yep. yeah. Switching gears for a second, being a Canadian guy yourself, you hear the strictly oh my in gosh. the background. You well, that was that was another reason, you know, I had the mic unplugged and was stalling to get on because I was actually <laughs> just, you know, enjoying. It, it really is. I mean, look, it's a beautiful setting where we are. The sun's going down on another fabulous day. Uh, this summer has been amazing. But to, to hear Strictly Hip, it never, ever gets old. And... I think, again, that's kind of the beauty of this little market that we live in. Um, it's it's very unique among American cities yeah. to have this kind of love for a band like this. Yeah, and obviously you're a hip fan, right? Oh, well, gosh, yeah. There. I mean, there were – I think the first time I saw them was in Edmonton. I was working mid-'90s uh, out in Edmonton on the Oilers um, radio broadcast, and uh, I think that was the first time I, I saw them. And 
in a big arena show, that is. And, um, yeah, it's still hard to believe that Gord's uh, not with us anymore. But yep. uh, the power of music is that yeah. he'll never, ever not be with us. Yeah. Um, Amy and I actually came here to Riverworks to watch the last show that they played in Kingston. Right. And yeah. we were here, and it was Man, I got goosebumps thinking about it. It was so emotional. Mm -hmm. And uh, being back here and Strictly Hit playing is kind of interesting how it all connects together. And unfortunately, uh, you know, Gore passed of glioblastoma, which is a horrible form of cancer. And it just, you know, stuff like that fuels us. Well, and I mean, any time now when you're in this hockey setting, um, you, you <laughs> were 24 hours removed, not even probably since Dale Howarchuk passed away. Yep. Yet at the same time, um, you know, we're trying to celebrate the return of Oscar Lindblom with the with the right. Flyers. I mean, to be so young and to have the Ewing sarcoma diagnosis that he had, uh, you know, early on in this season and to see him battle back. Um, we're never far from it. We know that. And, um, boy, it really hurts knowing that Dale isn't with us, um, you know, through Howard Chuck Strong and... Uh, just reaching out to uh, Brad May last night, um, I was just offering my condolences to him because he, you know, has such a great amount of respect for Dale as a mentor when, when the two of them were with the Sabres in the early 90s. And Brad texted back this, as Brad often does, this incredibly heartfelt message saying that Dale had called him uh, in the last 24 hours to uh, say goodbye and to, um, to not hurry up to catch him up there and to uh, say that he was going to do his best to look over everybody until they all get there. And wow. uh, amazing. It, it's, it's incredible. We, you know, our line of work, we were lucky to be able to celebrate the accomplishments of those athletically in their field on the ice. But when you find out over time that someone is even more of a Hall of Famer from a humanitarian and just a great person, standpoint um it really does blow your mind how people can be so great at everything and i think dale was that yeah so yeah and uh we, we had him here in buffalo for a long time which was a real highlight of my youth because i i mean he was the first overall round overall draft pick and mm -hmm. just an amazing hockey player i didn't know him as a person obviously he's older but man he was he was fun to watch oh as a player. i think that's you know the, with I, I i take it always have taken it seriously i think in the sense of like i love the history of the game and the numbers and the stories and try to you know retain as much of it as i can so you can share the great stories with people um naturally spontaneously you know in our line of work and 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 so opportunities like this past year where it was the 50th season it really gave us a, a big opportunity to dive back into the record books yeah. right to try to tell the younger generation why these names matter and all of them do anybody that's ever worn the sweater has a place in the team's history but at a time like this with Dale's passing, um, you know, people need to understand, like, we always, I mean, the one thing that captures hockey fans' minds all the time is trade talk, right? Well, you think of what the Sabres did in and around that time in 1990. I mean, they had a number one overall pick in Pierre Turgeon. They traded him for Pat Lafontaine. They had a future Hall of Fame defenseman in Phil Housley. They traded him for Dale Howarchuk. I mean, these are massive trades. These are larger-than-life hockey players that came to this market, yep. and that's why that team was so good in the 90s. The re regular seasons didn't show it, but they had an incredible amount of talent, and amidst it, even though Dale was on the back you know, side of his career, like Dale led the team in scoring in three of his four full years here. That's with LaFontaine, with McGillney, with other, you know, like yep, yep, he was yep. a true legend in this game. And I, I hope that, you know, the, the young fans find a way to to learn more of Dale's story because, boy, at age 57 and, and, and with what he was still giving to the game as a coach in the Ontario Hockey League, including one of our prospects in Matei Picar, learning firsthand from him, um, you know, again, we, we, we say we've lost another yeah. one too soon. Yeah. yeah. So. That's why we keep doing what we're doing. That's yeah, right now. that's it's, right. It's I, I just, I knew, you know, coming here, um, uh, and obviously why everybody's here, uh, so I had to reach out to my mom again today because, so she's a cancer survivor, and I always get the dates confused. So she, it was 1976 for her, and so I was just about five years old, and, and she never had to go through chemo. She had surgery uh, for breast cancer, and like she said, thankfully she had a, a surgeon that uh, was obviously very good and, and, and got everything. But she, she texted me something today that, I mean, I knew, but sometimes when you read it, you're, it, it, it really can kind of rattle you a little bit. 
because that word still strikes fear in us yeah. so much. Yeah. And so while she had the surgery and she recovered, for 25 years she continued to go to Princess Margaret Hospital in Toronto for checkups. So while I knew that, when I read it, I was like, my God, like your nerves right. every single time. Yeah. I mean, she's in her 20s when she's dealing with it, and then she's almost 50, and she's still going for checkups. Yeah. Like well. that's your life is impacted forever yeah. by this. And I'm just one of the lucky ones that didn't lose the most important person in my life yeah. at an early age. Yeah. And uh, it, the person sitting next to me, my right. wife, there has the same sort of uh, same sort of things going on in her life. And you're, she's you're always reminded. You're yep. always a cancer survivor. Yep. You know, it's, yep. I think cancer survivors are so grateful for the hospitals that they can go to and the research that keeps continuing on. It's, yeah. it's, it's important to keep going and, and going to the appointments isn't so bad. It's, you know, waiting for results that <laughs> can be pretty bad. But. Yeah. And Duff, you've been involved with some of our beneficiaries, haven't you? Want to talk about that a bit? Yeah. Um, it's the word survivors is, uh, you know, it's, it's everything. I mean, that's why we're here. We're trying to give everybody a chance uh, to extend their days. And, and the, the professional hockey community is always uh, touched by um, the young people that are affected by cancer. And, um, you know, getting to know Andre the Warrior this past year as uh, someone who was the face of our Hockey Fights Cancer Night um, someone you guys know well, and Emmett Jakubowski, who's been involved yep. um, for years, and I'm yep. going to see here on Friday, uh, who I just got a text from last week, which is so great. Um, and, and they all, met, or most, I think, in this area, uh, because this organization in particular does such a great job, um, most find themselves connected with Camp Good Days at some point in time. Yep. And um, that's where... You know, I'm wearing the jacket one last time here. These were the, the gold blazers from our Sabres broadcast this year for the 50th season, and they're up for auction right now at sabres.com slash auctions, and the bidding closes on Sunday. So we've been having playful banter all week long, trying to raise the bids and stuff. So this will be the last public appearance for the jacket, and then, uh, you know, we'll see there'll be, a, you know, a winner, obviously, on Sunday. RJ's, you know, kind of like, I think, three or four times ahead of the rest of us. <laughs> of His jacket's already up over 1000 bucks, which is amazing. Awesome. And everybody's picked their their charity of choice and for me it's it's camp good days and it always has been when we were season ticket holders living in southern ontario and we started coming down to games here and couldn't use the tickets the tickets would be redistributed to charitable organizations that's how i found out about camp good days that's how i met lisa there that's how everything came to be as far as the connection with camp and then we moved down here and immediately you know became neighbors with a kid who had been going to camp since she was two and now she's in college and She's a great inspiration as well, Ellie DeLucia. And um, so there, you don't have to look too far for inspiration around here. Yeah. So Camp Good Days plays Make-A-Wish. Mm -hmm. Last year, how was that game? <laughs> have any highlights that you want to share? I think they were X-rated. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still trying to find the guy that hit me. Um, no, I, you know what? It was, I thought it would be easy, but my, I was a little sore. Yeah, like it was only a three-hour shift, but it was only. it was a little more than I. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm looking at this guy. I'm like, I'm not going to be tired. Like, <laughs> but it did take its toll. Some of us just aren't blessed with the hockey gene yeah. to be able to play yeah. all the time. So. Yeah, we went from uh, our first community shift was four hours, and that was like you get to the third hour, you're like, oh, okay, I can do this. You get to the fourth hour, and you're ready to, you know, have it have it be done. It's it, it, it's it's. Because most guys go out, <laughs> most beer leaguers, they go out and they play for an hour, hour and a half maybe. They have a couple of beers and whatever, uh, coffee if you're playing in the morning, and then uh, mm -hmm. you're done. But uh, four in a row, it's pretty, pretty, pretty tough. And I have to say, I'm so proud to see the original members out there because you know firsthand the physical toll that it took on a lot of those players yep. that first year and, and the length of time it took for them to recover, and thank goodness they did. Um, and I'm sure they would do it again um, because of the experience yep. and what it means to the soul. I mean, it just, 
it's always with you. I mean, you can you give yourself to something like this in that original format. Yeah. yeah. We often say that they were the start. Cool. They laid the path out for, for the future community shift. They're Amazing. an incredible group of guys. Um, so it's it's perfect timing to be talking about the original 40 because we're going to share our documentary. Beautiful. In a, in a few, moment, few moments here. Anything you want to say about your experience before we share? Well, um, I'll just say please watch the video if you're watching. It's pretty cool. It's, it's about 15 minutes long. I think it captures what we've done, what we accomplished, and all the support that we got, whether it be sponsors or donors or our friends from uh, Excelsior or the, the, the media around Buffalo is so gracious. The alumni, we'll talk about Michael Peck is here, and we'll talk to some of the alumni. We didn't, we were talking about Dale Howard, Chuck, but the alumni, you know, everybody helped to, to make that thing happen. So if you please watch the, uh, watch the video, watch the documentary, it, uh, it's, it's rather enjoyable. Duff, thank you so much. We really appreciate My it. My pleasure. Thank Good you. luck. Thank you, Duff.